There's only one plan, right, Saiyan? This has got to be it. Picked up the Wait. Eviscerate as well. Ent is going to rip out the Zap here on his own Frog, which makes sense, drawing two more cards. Now the Evolve comes down. That is a very effective racing board, especially with this weapon equipped. That means with the weapon equipped for PNC, every minion that he's able to hit with that weapon is going to generate him an extra three drop off that disease vulture that he rolled. Yeah, and for RGB, he's going to go all damage route. This pressing comes in hand, which is good with all of these zero man spells, but I think Lee has already set his mind to Leroy Shadow Step. Leroy. Leroy. Yep. Which for six mana is going to be able to close out this game if PNC does not find a taunt to put in the way of it. PNC not finding the taunt that he needs in the way. He has built a very impressive board before turn five, but the rope getting the kill right here on turn six. Yeah, huge outcome for Lee. He had a terrible looking hand, but it started to look more, slightly more appealing when you just jam it all into your opponent's face. PNC needed to go fishing for those evolve, evolve outcomes. He still has a chance, I think. If he managed to pick up one of his value generator cards with the Burgle cards, I think he can still fight for board. Enough to get more time to get potentially additional burst also. Makes a lot of sense. So KCR picking up more faceless lackeys. I don't think these are the lackeys he wants to see at this point. I think he would rather have spell lackeys or titanic lackeys just to make himself more safe. I think KCR at this point thinks that he's pretty safe in the game as long as he doesn't get burned down. Yeah. There's a bunch of different lackeys that you can get. There's six currently in standard right now. Uh, faceless lackeys, someone's around a two cost minion. Double the battle cry of that, you get two. Oh, Pyromancers. That is actually not guaranteed. It's not summoned two of the same random two drop. It summons two different ones. It just so happens to be the same one here. I think that Casey may have just made a huge error here. Oh, he just board locked himself. Yeah. And the board Casey. is still full and it doesn't pick up a taunt. That means that Surrender gets the Lyra for the, for the lethal. I mean, this is just something from Casey where I, I'm yeah, so... Yeah, I think this is a very huge error from Casey this game. And uh, it's, it's just an error you can't make here. Well, it's something that's like so in the moment where you just forget about it, but man, is that punishing. Surrender figures out, yes, he has to delay a turn, has to set it up, and Casey uh, doesn't hand him the win. Tom no, deciding not to totem. Just uh, keep the board size small, make sure that uh, the Mogu doesn't come out too early. Lion here just goes ahead and rips it. Oof. That is a low roll if I've ever seen one, Sottle. It is a horrible low roll, yeah. You are expecting three three-fourths with uh, one beneficial effect on average from your, your role of Desert Hair Evolve. Um, but it did seem like an overreaction to the board state that he was facing down because there was no like really crucial must-kill minions on that board apart from the uh, Thunderhead itself. I guess that's what he was scared of, right? Just the amount of damage that the uh, Thunderhead could do with so many more ones. Yeah, Tom actually getting quite a few... Wow, what a combination of rolls here, actually. The five drop actually has a text uh, that reads, give all of your top minions plus two attack. And the two drop slot, I believe it's 5% chance or something like that to get a, uh, a two drop taunt. 2% so roll, 2% chance, 2%. even low, right? Yep. I definitely like trading in because a three drop likely is not going to be able to contest a four three. And now it's a lot more difficult for Tom just to contest the CJ here, what he has got on board. One zero behind. He doesn't see himself in a very good spot right now, and uh, he felt that getting the shark out there was worth it. And honestly, from Fina's perspective, maybe this uh, is a sign to uh, start going for an Edwin. He just forced out a brawl. Maybe the second brawl or Plague of Wrath isn't in Bloody Face's hand, and he can just land a huge Edwin. You know, that's a clever disguise now, and uh, a lot of things can happen from that. Seance, you could. Okay, well, that's another way to do it. I think the game plan right now for Fino is just make a big Edwin if possible. Yeah, he just saw a brawl, right? So yeah. uh, he shouldn't be that afraid right now. Imagine seancing the Edwin if he's doing this last. Oh, Shadow Step. That's a card that we were talking about earlier. Good idea to save those important AoE players. 
guess. Fino already seeing one brawl gun and also seeing that Bloodyface didn't want to brawl this turn. Probably has some sort of a read, but not really a read. I think that at this point, you just kind of have to commit to that one. <laughs> Another Shadow Step. Yeah, this is what we we're talking about. Stuff like this can't happen. Violet Haze. Violet Haze. Savannah Highbeam. Fino here would probably just play that Arcane Tripper together with the Edwin. It's true. It's more Casper. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Fino wants yes. to do the five damage face. Yeah. We, we yes. That is a sap, but Fino is also in the weird position now where he doesn't guarantee bounce the novice. And he really wants the novice back. And enough pressure, I think, to win the game. Counterpoint. He has a silence as well. Oh. Very in Vryn. And we'll probably see a very in Vryn on the board this turn. Yeah. But it's a 10 mana card that draws three, puts a 7 7 in play. Oh, there's Shadow a Shadow Step, step and there's a Ice Baron's Hogwarts, oh, that's so good! Yeah, and Fino decides to just pass. Yes, especially this matchup. It's super interesting because the approaches that Rogue can take is so many, and uh, we see here that Bloodyface just has to play the defender because Fino is just there's no other option. Fino is just going 1-0 with the Silence pickup. And the Silence just ends the game. This game is insane, man. This game is insane. Yeah, and Fino takes the... Victory and uh, this the is what I like to board. see. This is what I love to see. Hard Hearthstone games where good play wins. Not to discredit Bloody Face. I think Bloody Face played his hand about as well as possible. And just Vino played so well in this game. Yeah. The, the only yeah. And oh, 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 Vino with the inner oh, fire. Oh, this might be an explosive one from Vino. This is so good. Vino saw that Bloody Face full mulligan in his hand, which makes it a little bit less likely that Silence is there. I think that is just going for an inner fire trade already, and that... Hope it just gets a lot of trades and eventually just gets there. But you know, sense, but already, he just already has, has lethal. lethal. Yeah. yeah, and that's where saving, saving the inner fire came come back to just give him an instant win. And Fina just takes the victory then. Up to the winner bracket versus Lion. I mean, here for Lee, I'd like to see the Acolyte ran in and maybe play out the Psycho Pomp in the hopes of resurrecting it. I think he has a 1 out of 3, maybe 1 out of 4 at this point. And just get back into the card the card drop mode because without it it's gonna be very difficult. Yeah I like that. The end. Lee disagrees. Um, but I find myself on Saiyan side here. I think the uh, the Acolyte of Pain chance there. More arms onto the injured blade master and we can clear off an extra cycle pop, but that's not gonna make or break the uh, the points of RG Lee finding me the following turn, I think. Funnily enough, it might. So if the spell gets drawn here, it does. Okay, so now we actually have to do that. <laughs> so eight damage gets pushed immediately. Pop, right? That's true. Yeah, we'll yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. 21 to 18. Eight minions, 16, 19. It actually ends up being lethal here. Yep, I think so. So actually, RNG Lee snatching victory from the Jaws of Defeat as Surrender pulls out the Bomb Zombie Tech on turn 7. But a little bit too slow. It seems like Light Warden is able to close this game out. Yeah. And actually, going back and looking at it, I think uh, Lee recognized the spot very nicely. I think his decision to maximize his chances at a Light Warden as opposed to maximizing his chances at an Acolyte of Pain actually probably pans out better for him in that situation.
stay hydrated out there. Seven Zephyrus Avenging Wrath. Yeah, great spot. I'm I'm upset, Sato. Not not because of PNC. This play was perfect, but yeah, yeah. I'm upset that we spent this entire game talking about these late game <laughs> scenarios, and then the drip just kills the warrior. Welcome to casting, saying you plant a hundred seeds and one of them might blossom someday. In this case, this was not it. We did not get to the late game baleful banker scenarios, but that was a very, very nice lethal spot. Can we make a topsy play here to get through the card two? Yeah, it's, to, right? it's kind of what I've been looking at. It's pretty awkward. We flip the card two, right? You flip the card two, yeah. Inner fire is the same thing. It achieves the same effect by using an inner fire instead of a topsy turvy. I guess it's just fireball. Just a fireball. Just a fireball, yeah. 15 damage is a lot more than just a fireball. In the light, name. Healing up the North Shard by ending up throwing it away. I mean, this it seems irrelevant, but I would like to see the Light Warden at full health here just to make sure that Plague of Wrath doesn't uh, end the game. Right, yeah, that's a really good point. A double Warpath with Dynamatic here is a full clear, right? Yes, it is. Yeah, the Light Warden's gone at this point. Five health remaining on the Light Warden. Again, another reason, just the, the lack of health on this Light Warden. Allowing Casey to find the punish in the best kind of way, and Casey does square it up, bringing that kind of feeling as well. If he underplays, then the Gang boss is just going to challenge all of his minions individually over the coming turns. Does decide for me to go for the draw line. Actually, able to pick up the beaming psychic as well. Casey gives the nod as he sees the beaming psychic come down, though. And MC Tech is active. It is coming out on curve. Taking and the he best takes minion. the big one. The three-four changes sides. Casey says, "Welcome to the team." Also has the added bonus of completing the quest. Wow. And PNC with his tournament life, his BlizzCon life on the line, says that's enough. He tap. I think there's definitely a lethal that is very likely to hit now. We've seen this before with Fino. Fino versus Casey, where he had an impossibly hard Priest versus Priest hand. Rope is burning. He's got to hurry it up. I think this is 29, if I've kept track of it all accurately. We're about to find out. Power Word Shield. That's the extra damage. That is the extra damage. That is the extra damage. Power Shield is lethal. Did he not get it off? Oh. Okay, 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 yeah, second injury. Re-injuring, re-injuring in the Nefeset. Re-injuring in the Nefeset is the same damage. Oh, no, no! He didn't get the attack off. There's also the Cleric for our opponent, right? So, yeah. Like, he, do we have to trade into that Cleric first? And if he's going for the circle play, this is starting to get really scary because there's a lot of draws here. And the, the draws are happening, the animations so are happening from both okay. sides, right? Come so, on, it's on. extremely hard here. Fino on the ropes, Gallant. This is so tense. Oh, no, he Divine picks Spirit. up the Inner Fire and the Divine Spirit. That's Does lethal, that right? right? Yeah, I think that's lethal. lethal. So. 14 plus 7, that's 21. No, this is 28! No! He no, misses it! No, no, he has, he has, well, he has two extra, extra arms. He has two extra arms. Did he mess it up? No! Bloody oh, face no! is gonna take it! Oh no! Not again! Not again! Fino, dude! Oh. 
Bloody Face is going to take it after Fino misses just a tiny but incredibly crucial one extra damage. Bloody Face 2-1 moves on to the top four. Make sure she is very clear on how much damage she has. 61 total here from Casey means that Dr. Boom coming down only takes him up to 68. So I believe if we have done our addition correctly, saying that Lion just has it this turn, and we will wait and see. To be clear, she does have to map it out correctly uh, with, with the swipe first, all the Moonfires, and the final swipe to take the game here. Step one, swipe first. Moonfires now have to come in. Well, actually, whoa, 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 whoa. She'll, she'll have armor anyway. Actually, it doesn't quite matter at this point. Right, right, right. There's too much armor. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Right, right, right. Free sequencing. She's done all the hard work. She's got to the point. Lion is going to be your first finalist. And you can see the emotion on her face. And she's going to go over and throw out the well play to Casey, who has put in another phenomenal performance. I think he'll take this home. What a bait! I thought you were going to go for a line, but the last second switching to the hometown crowd, or at least I think they're cheering for Bloodyface. I think this might be a win-win scenario for some of the fans, as they would love to see Lion or Bloodyface take it. So I guess we are the winners of all of this. In the meantime, uh, we're done with this interview. Thank you so much, Muz, for stopping by. We're going to send it over to the other side of the tavern momentarily with Sado, who also has a special guest. What's happening, Sado? Absolutely nothing awkward about that whatsoever. Are you? How are you doing? Thing into the ether, smacking a taunt totem. Lion can find that big draw here. It's going to be huge punishment for Bloody Face. Collective breath. Desert hold. I think it's up to Lion. I imagine she's interested in zapping her spear to the frog first. Getting another evolve. Always play the one that you just drew. She throws out the quick prayer. I'm not even joking, it is actually important to play the one that you just drew in that situation. That's pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. Bloody face doesn't really have any response to this, just throws out the ferocious howl and passes, and now the world is Lion's Oyster this turn. Being able to be added to all of that as well. You don't even have to go for an evolve here if you if you really want. It's not actually a huge upgrade. Uh, four four mana minions are three fours on average. Roll of three point eight, four point seven. But you can see like it's barely pushing that next full uh, upgrade in terms of stat. Ever going to be good enough? So bloody face does his due diligence, rips out the nourish, does not find any magical solutions in his deck. It's like Bloody Face is trying to call for some attention here yep. to be able to continue playing his turn at the very least. There we go. With the uh, Mutate as well, he has the option to take the rebuy if he gets anything particularly unattractive that oh. he doesn't want. For example, one of those Twilight Drakes. <laughs> He did get the uh, Sapper as well, which is actually a pretty powerful option, uh, particularly in the Shaman Mirror. That can be incredibly swingy, where both players are trying to load up enormous amounts of but, uh, board tension. But is it? Maybe it just allows Lion to bounce back for the Forgotten Oh King. my goodness, you are so right. That's really interesting. I hadn't even looked at that. I would kind of argue that the 7-7 seven, seven on the board is worth quite a lot in the situation, sure. though. I think when you look at the way this turn is playing out with the Oasis Surger and the Swipe, I think just the full tempo swing here makes a lot of sense. And honestly, bouncing one of these Surgers back to hand is perfectly reasonable as well in this spot. I, I think as long as it hits a Surger or the Coon, she's going to get huge value out of that. Yep. Even if the Anubisaf gets sent back, it gets sent back as a 3-1 and will then cost zero again at some point in the near future. There's really no bad outcome here for Lion on the rebuy. Just a free Oasis Surger. One Oasis Surger that you know your opponent has already answers over 50% of your board state in this position. Oh, I mean, the Druid is in such a good spot right now. Yeah. 
I think Ladyface is afforded one more turn here to maybe rip that desert hair and get something very powerful. Okay. Eight drops are powerful, but they ain't that powerful, Bloody Face. Lion is going to go up 2 and 0 with some commanding Mali goes through and play. Whoo! One game away from making history. And in the best possible position she could possibly be in this game, I think. Uh, she has a one drop, she has Zephyr, she is on the play versus Quest Druid. All of those things are so good. There is Secret into Mask Contender on five if nothing superior is picked up. And this damage is just going to keep on ramping up. Eight more being pushed this turn. Oh boy, this is going to add up very, very quickly if Bloody Face cannot turn the corner here. How oh, about you? This looks like a turn five to me. It's not a super aggressive turn five, but it fills the curve. A snipe pickup, I think, is also pretty impactful. Yep. Mask Contender going to land here. Pulling out the pressure plate is the random Bloody secret Face that comes out. Is at 11, and his quest isn't even completed yet. Unleash the beast off the top is one of the best cards you could possibly hope for. Do you play around? You know, you, it could just as easily be looking at hands that have a hidden oasis in it, don't have an oasis surger, in which case, like having the persistent minion damage on board is, is superior in that position. But Lion here gets to just go Divine Shield, Wind Fury with Siamat, which is about the scariest thing you can do against Druid because they have a nightmare dealing with that minion. The pressure play is going to remove this 6 6 Torn, as I mentioned. The secrets are about as perfect as possible. Bloody Face has the length of this rope to perform a miracle this turn, but I do not see it, Gallon. A new set defender is going to get sniped. Lion looks up in expectation, just waiting for this turn to pass to her, and it does. 17 damage in play. Desert Spear is going to come through, and Lion becomes the first woman to reach the pinnacle of competitive Hearthstone. She is your 2019 BlizzCon champion and your 2019 global champion. Whew. What a performance, Gallon. Absolutely. Just a commanding 3-0 in the finals, a commanding performance throughout the entire tournament, a commanding performance throughout this entire year, culminating in one of the biggest events in Hearthstone's history. Another question. Everyone's talking about how this is a landmark moment for women everywhere who compete. What does it mean to you to become the champion on this stage, in this very moment, as the first woman to do it? Um, can I tell a story? I got time. <laughs> does everyone have time here? Do you want to listen to a story? Like two years ago, I remember when I was competing in a huge tournament. I was waiting in line for backup signups. And uh, there is this guy telling me that if you're a girl, you should not wait in line here. It's not for you. And now today, I'm here with all the support from the fans. So, I want to say to all the girls out there who have a dream for esports, for competition, for glory, if you want to do it and you believe in yourself, you should just forget your gender and go for it.